have to, you know, the way of Torah is to argue. There's a thing that's learning Torah without argument. It's not such a great honor. Uh, so today is the 16th of Elul, by the way. Two more days, and it would have been the 18th. Okay, you know, the Shabbos, Friday. Um, and Elul is, of course, I'll be speaking a little about Elul. The uh, Chayyodom famously says, he describes Elul as a tremendous gift that the Kodesh Baruch Hu has given Cloud Israel. Tshuva is a gift, becoming better, growing as people, as Jews. So really, we should be doing tshuva all year round, says the Chai Yodom. But Elul is special, and the tshuva is more easily accepted, easier to do, than Shor Yemos HaShonu. We usually think of a Seres Yemei Tshuva as being that way, but the Chai Yodom says Elul is given for that purpose. And he goes and explains the historical context of Elul. Moshe Rabbeinu went back to Arsinai to achieve a full kapora for Kal Yisrael, and that culminated in Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, where there was a mechila gemura. In other words, Elul is not just a preparatory stage for Rosh Hashanah. Not just, okay, you have 30 days now, and there's really nothing special about these 30 days, but it's 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. And you have 30 days before Pesach. Well, some say 30 days before Sukkot, or 30 days before Shavuos, even some say, and then you have 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. No. Elul is something, historically. There's a Shefa in Elul. It's not just preparatory for Rosh Hashanah. It's a gift. Something happened in Elul. Moshe Rabbeinu was in the heart. Now what's interesting is that we're preparing, we are preparing for the Yom Abdin. But the specialness of Elul, Moshe Rabbeinu was in Mount Sinai and he was searching for Kapara. He was yearning for Kapara. He was aspiring to achieve Kapara and full Shuba, full Kapara on behalf of Kali as well. And that really <coughs> seems to be the the spiritual emanations, if I may say, for Elul, and if one event happened, Pesach is Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, Cherus, Shuvah's Makhim Torah, Sukkah, Sukkah Shalom, and Elul is yearning, looking for, groping, searching, aspiring. This is what we do in Elul. We, and this is what's famously described <coughs> by the Balatanya in the Kutei Or as the Melech in Basodeh, and Rosh Hashanah, the Melech in the palace. And the Melech HaKadosh Baruch when he's not so accessible. You have to really, you have to have an appointment maybe, maybe everybody gets an appointment on Rosh Hashanah. But he is in the palace. And in Elul, we greet him, and he smiles at us, in the Russian, he smiles at us, he, 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 he's pleasant, he's cheerful to see us, so to speak, so to speak. And he's in the field, meaning he's not in the palace, he's not there, but he's approachable. And he is, that's when you could make your appointment, that's when you could talk to him. But, so this is the yearning of Elul. That's what the 40 days of well, 30 of Elul and then the search of Mechuba, where Moshe Benu was. So that's what we do. El, the abode of Elul, if I may say so, is to is to yearn and aspire and like grow. This is, I want to get to where I want to be. Tshuva, you know, I'm, I started to make tshuva, Yom Kippur, so to speak. El, the tshuva being done El is I, I want to be close. I want to have that desire. I want to have that yearning. Because that's what happened when Moshe Rabbeinu was at Har Sinai. The emanation of El is those days when Moshe Rabbeinu was in the Har and the mountain, Har Sinai, trying to achieve Kapara, trying to get there. And when you want to get somewhere, sometimes, this is the Melech Asodem Marshal, sometimes the yearning and the groping and the searching puts you in a closer place than when you're there already. When you're there already, the Melech, the palace, and you have. 
you come in at whatever your station is, but when you're searching and groping, you can achieve a closeness that you may not be able to achieve even on Rosh Hashanah. Of course, you, 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 the yearning and the searching and the groping is all, that makes you close. That itself achieves a closeness. The Pasuk says, back in Parshus Shoftim, in Re'eh, I'm sorry, in Re'eh, Bonim Atem Lashem Elokecha. Very, very, uh, you know, if we listen to Laning sometimes, we listen to Laning. We're supposed to listen to especially in Chumash Devarim. In Chumash Devarim, the Tzukim are really very inspiring. If we listen to the Tzukim, the Chumash Devarim is a Lusa Sefer, for the most part. And Moshe Rabbeinu is talking to Cloud Israel. So it's a very inspiring word. Bonim Atem Hashem Elokechem, you are children to Hashem. We'll see the ramifications of being children to Hashem, what it means and what are the ramifications. And therefore, Lot is going to do, and you know, cut yourselves over a base, to hush for that, or it means don't argue one with another, you're all together. You're a holy people. All the nations of the world, and the Lord who chose us to be an Amsagula, a treasure, his treasure. Treasure, people in love might say, you know, you're my treasure, I treasure you. That's what Hashem says to us. Now let's listen. In the Mora Kiddushin, the Flamidvov Amar Aleph, is a Machlokes Tanoi. Machlokes in the Gemara. Bonimantem Hashem Elokechem. Rabbi Yehuda says, if you act like children, faithful to your father, not like my children, but if you act like children of the father, then you're my children. But if you, if you don't act properly, if you rebel, if you act out, if you, if you refuse to listen to the father, you don't want to bend to the father's authority, you want to be independent, then in a temp Korean bonnet, then you're not my bonnet. Divi Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Meir Omer, Rabbi Meir says, no. Benkach u benkach a temp Korean bonnet. No matter how you act, you will always be my children. I will always be your father, you will always be considered my children. Shenemar and Rabbi Meir brings four psukim in Tanakh that prove his point. Bonim Sichlin Hema. Foolish children, but they're children. For Oimer, another person said, Bonim lo Eimon bon. Untrustworthy children, but they're children. For Omer, another person, Zera Mereyim Bonim Ashchisim. Terrible word, Bonim Ashchisim. Tomorrow, destructive of your Bonim. Omer, Instead of saying you're not my nation, I will say you are Bnei Kel Chai, you are my children. Says the Gemara, what do we need four psukim for? What does Rameyah need four psukim for? And the Gemara goes down the line. He says, you know, if we do things foolishly, then maybe we're still called children. But if we're untrustworthy, that's why he says the second person. The second person. Untrustworthy, okay, but if you do have the Zara, what could be more horrible than a Jew that does have the Zara? Zara, Marei, and Bonin, Mashchisin, right? She says, Ashkosa is usually a reference to the Zara. Even then, you're my children. The Chitema, Bonin, Mashchisin, who the Mikri, Bonamalia, who the Mikri, but I don't. Your children, but like you know, like adopted children, so to speak. Uh, you're not really my children. You're not up there. I'm not much of you at all. No, says so Rameir. Even then, you're amazing. You're you're on top of the world. 
That's really, really strange, right? I mean, how far are we going to push this? But to Romeo's point, Rashi says something very, very strange, apparently, in the fourth passage. Because remember, there's a machlekes Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir here. Rabbi Yehuda says, when you don't act like, like children, you're not my children. Rabbi Meir says, no, you are. Brings forth, took him in descending order of how bad a person, the depths a person could reach, but Hashem will still call you his child. And the fourth passage is, so Rashi says on the fourth passage, which says that you're not even low life children, but you're up there, Rashi says, Al Yidei Teshuva. Wait a second. Wait, Al Yidei Teshuva. What does that mean? You did Teshuva? Surely Rabbi Yehuda is not going to argue that if you did Teshuva, you have a right to be called Bonim. But we're in Rabbi Meir now, who argues, right? It says, but Rashi, at that last lowest Madrega, Rashi says, The Hodra Mikri B'nei Kel Chai Al Yidei Teshuva. What does Rashi mean? Now the Rashba and the Tshuva says, the Rashba and the Tshuva, so Rashba says that even though normally we pass them like Rabbi Yehuda, when there's a Machlok of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir, this is Nogea Lahalacha, this is the story of a Meshumid, and they wanted a, what's a Meshumid? A Meshumid, someone that uh, left the fold. But you can't, right? So the Rashba was asked if you could lend him, if you're allowed to take readers from him, if you're allowed to take interest from him. And the, that's what the Rashba was asked, and the Rashba answered, we pass them like Rameyer. You're always a Jew. You always have a connection. You'll always be Bonim. You're always called Bonim. Of course, even according to Rabbi Yehuda. Maybe according to Rabbi Yehuda, you, you become a second class citizen. But according to Rameyer, you're always Bonim. We pass them like Rameyer, says the Rashba, even though normally we pass them like Rabbi Yehuda. But Rameyer has all these fine sukkim. Sukim Kodaiki Kiramea, the Sukim imply that Ramea's sheet is correct, and therefore we're going to go with Ramea, and I'm going to pass it like Ramea. That's the Rashi. And therefore you're not allowed to take Therefore you cannot take Rebus from him, and now, okay, what are the ramifications of being children, no matter what? There's a medrash in Parshas Loeschana. A tsar l'cha, when things are not going so pleasant, as a, 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 a very um, a very special rabbi said this past Tuesday night when Hashem throws you a curveball. So <laughs> the pasuk says, "A tsar l'cha, u'metzaucha, don't have troubles." V'shavta al Hashem alokecha. You'll do tshuva. This will spur you to do tshuva. Only Rav Omer of Shmuel Pargarita b'shem Rav Meir. Meir. What is this like? Lemen Melech, the son of the king, sheyotzul the tarvus ro. One of the two. Vaya Melech mishalech pagdubudo achrov. The Melech would send shaluchim, a teacher, maybe pedagogue. Sounds like the word comes from there. And says, "Come back, my child. Come back." Ben Mishacho, the son sends back a message, the other of his inflection mind. Beilu aponim ani chayse. In Yiddish you say, what's aponim at this hobbin? I should come back now. I'm maluchlach, I'm dirty with hate. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I need this bayesh lufanecha. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to come back. How can I show my face to the palace after what I've done, after how I'm acting? The father sends back a message. Never heard of such a thing. A son should be embarrassed to go back to his father, no matter what the son has done. No embarrassment to let Chasmashon enter the picture. You're my bed, says the message. And Rabbe is one that says this. You my man, come back, you'll be welcome. There's nothing to be ashamed. Well, you're not the hoser, you're not coming back to the police station. You're not coming back to a government bureaucratic office. Hey, to the You're coming back home. You're coming back to your father. Kacha Kodesh Baruch and he goes through the Psukim in your 
the Isu, the Isu El Ov, Hamein Yaker Le Ephraim. So in El Ov, we take Chizuk, we prepare and we yearn, we want to do Tshuva, and we're Bonimatim Hashem El Okechem. Listen to this matter, your mayor, Rash Papasko is like your mayor. You are my Chosh. No matter what you've done, says the Midrash, the father sends to the son. So I'm embarrassed. No need to be embarrassed. No need to be embarrassed. You're my son. You're always welcome. You always walk in with your head held high that you're my son. And we'll work on it. You know, if you have things to fix up, we'll fix up things. I don't believe Rashi in Kiddushin means after he did Shuvah. That's when he's still called on him. But then I can't imagine from Yehuda Barani that he called on him after he did Shuvah. Rashi doesn't say after he did Shuvah. I think Rashi means the possibility of Shuvah. The fact that you can always do Shuvah. You're still born him because of your day Shuvah. Because you'll always come back. You'll never be embarrassed to come back. No. Come. Come to me. I'm available. I'm reachable. I'm approachable. Melech Basada. I'm a problem. Not the Melech, you know, the, the, the big scary Melech in the palace, where Cheshverosh, even his wife, was scared to walk in, had to have Rashus to walk in. I'm in the Soda. I'm chill. You can approach me. Rashi, I believe, means like the day Tshuva, that possibility, that we always believe in the possibility of Tshuva, and the Melech encourages Tshuva, and the Melech says to us, Melech says to his son, you have nothing left to be ashamed of. You, no, not, you have nothing left to be ashamed of. You shouldn't be ashamed to come back. You shouldn't be ashamed to come back to me. So that's one major ramification of Bonim Atem Hashem Elokeichem. We pass him like the mayor. The Rashba says we pass him like the mayor, although usually we pass him like Rabbi Yehuda, but the Psukim are just overwhelmingly imply that Rameh is right. We said Pshat in the last Rashi that it's because of the possibility of Tshuva and we believe in Tshuva and we showed in the Medrash that that's what Amelah says to his son that has gone off the Derech, Yotzel the Targus Ra'o, and the Melech says to his son, don't be ashamed to come back. You're always welcome in my house. Don't come back. There's another ramification. Here's the Rambam. Here's the Rambam. Listen to this Rambam. The Rambam says in Hilchus Matnas Aniyim. Rambam's talking about Benoz Machadero, Kimin Stalker, Kimin Chesed. The Rambam says, it's a Perik Yud, Halacha Beis. There are philosophical shyness about a person should, what a person is supposed to feel when he does the mitzvahs, how much of it is supposed to change a personality, and how much is supposed to be more robotic, and I'm just listening to Hashem. But by stock, it's clear that we're supposed to, the Torah demands that we open our hearts, that we feel sympathy for the money. We don't just write a check and say, here, leave me alone. Don't even bother walking into my door. Just leave me alone. I don't want to look at you. Here, here's a check. Why? That's wrong. You're supposed to open your heart. Right? Go to me. It says the love. Be sympathetic and have rechmon. It says the Rambam. Kol amarachem, marachem olav. You just make it bigger. You want Hashem's rechmon. It's also rechmon on others. Shenem ar v'nosu macharachem v'richamcha. Someone who has a cold, stone heart, he starts talking about Bnei Yisrael. Check up on his pedigree. Don't do a shit with him so fast, says the Rambam. Check on his ancestors. If he's a stone-hearted, cold, unfeeling brute. We find that by non-Jews, that they're Azorian. 
Bechol Yisroel, but Klal Yisroel, Bahanil Zalmayem, and anyone who becomes a Jew, Achene, we're all brothers. Shenemar, Bonim Atem Hashem Alokeche. If every Jew is a son of Hashem, what does that make every Jew with every other Jew? Says the Rambam. Brothers, if we're all children of Hashem, so we're all brothers. Then lo yirachim ha'och al ha'och, says the Rambam. If a brother doesn't have rachmonas on a brother, mi yirachim ha'och. Who? How can you not open your heart, open your pocketbook, open your checkbook, open your wallet to your brother? If, if, you, if a brother can't help a brother, we're finished. And everybody in college is a brother because we're all born in. And if we're all born in Tashab, so we're all brothers to each other. Who will the Aniyah Yisrael turn to for help? This Rambam was actually based on a Gemara in Baba Basra. I believe. Gemara Baba Basra has a debate between Rabbi Akiva and Turnus Rufus, a Roman emperor. And he taunts him, he taunts Rabbi Akiva, and he says, if Hashem likes Aniyam so much, why doesn't he support them? What does he want from you? So he answered him to give us khar. We get out of Gehenna, we escape Gehenna, we escape punishment by giving stock. It's a tremendous schus. Turnus Rufus answers him. No, 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 no. He says, we're going to get Gehenna to give you stock. But I'll give you a marshal. The Melech boss of the dom, Shekos al Avdo, a Melech became angry at his servant and disobeyed him. And put him in jail. But Tzivo Olavin said, Not to give him food or drink, let him suffer. And someone went and brought him food and drink. The Melech is not going to be angry at him. I said he should sit in jail, he should rot in jail. He should get hungry and thirsty. What are you? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Amalai Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva answers him, I'll give you, it's not a good marshal, I'll give you the marshal. Melech Bosu Vadam, Shekas al Bna, he got angry at his child, and he put him in jail, and he said, you're not allowed to give him drink, you're not allowed to give him food, I want him to suffer, and someone came, Behefilo Behishko, says Rabbi Akiva. Shomei HaMelech, he's going to reward the guy. So the Rufus gave him watch and he's going to punish the fellow. Because when it's his son in jail, and he put him in jail, man. I put him in jail. And I said he should be suffering. But someone comes along and helps my son out. Lo Doro Meshachar Lo. Doesn't give him a present. He rewards him. But I know Korean born him. And we are born him. Rabbi Akiva in Pirkei Avos says, Avim in Yisrael, Shani Grubon of Lamoko. Rabbi Akiva was a Rebbe of Rameir. He was a Rebbe of Rebbe Yudu also, but apparently he weighs in like Rameir because in Pirkei Avos he doesn't qualify his statement. He says, Chavim in Yisrael, Shani Grubon of Lamoko. We are born in, and that's why we give stalker. So look at why we give stalker. We should be generous in giving stalker. The Gemara says that's our philosophical and theological excuse for giving stalker. It's because we're born in Lamoko. Hashem is very, very pleased with us, even though he put the fellow in the matzah, so to speak. Well, not so to speak. He did put the fellow in the matzah. But he's pleased as punch, as we say. Pleased as punch if we help him out. Same story, but in the first story, it was treasure. I treasure you. That's what Hashem says to us. Now let's listen. In the Gemara Kiddushin, the Flamid Vov Amar Aleph is a machlokes tanoi. Machlokes in the Gemara. 
Bonim Adim Hashem Elokeichem. Rabbi Yehuda says, if you act like children, faithful to your father, Bizman Shantem Nagim, not like my children, but Bizman Shantem Nagim, Minat Bonim, if you act like children of the father, then you're my children. Ainat Tem Nagim, Minat Bonim, but if you if you don't act properly, if you rebel, if you act out, if you, if you refuse to listen to the Father, you don't want to bend to the Father's authority, you want to be independent, then in a time, Korean bonnet, then you're not my bonnet. Divi Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Meir Omer, Rabbi Meir says, no. Ben kach u ben kach atem Korean bonnet. No matter how you act, you will always be my children. I will always be your father, you will always be considered my children. Shenemar and Rameya brings four psukim in Tanakh that prove his point. Bonim Sichlim Hema, foolish children, but they're children. For Oimer, another person says, Bonim Lo Eimon Bom, untrustworthy children, but they're children. For Omer, another person, Zera Mereyim Bonim Ashchisim, Terrible word, but I'm Tomorrow, destructive, but you're on it. But Omer, Vahayim, Vamokam, Asher, Yomel, Lohem, Lohem, Mi, Atem, Yomel, Lohem, B'nei, Kel, Choy. Instead of saying, you're not my nation, I will say, you are B'nei, Kel, Choy. You are my children. Says the Gemara, what do we need for Pesukim for? What does Ramey need for Pesukim for? And the Gemara goes down the line. He says, you know, if we do things foolishly, then maybe we're still called children. But if we're untrustworthy, that's why he says the second person. Toshiba, the second person. Untrustworthy, okay, but if you do have the Zara, what could be more horrible than a Jew that does have the Zara? Zara, Marei, and Bonim, Ashkisim, right? She says Ashkosa is usually a reference to have the Zara. Even then, you're my children. But I don't your children, but like you know, like adopted children, so to speak. Uh, you're not really my children, you're not up there. I'm not much of you at all. No. So as mayor, even then, you're amazing, you're you're on top of the world. <coughs> That's really, really strange, right? I mean, how far are we going to push this? What's Romeo's point? Rashi says something very, very strange, apparently, in the fourth passage. Because remember, there's a machlekes Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir here. Rabbi Yehuda says, when you don't act like, like children, you're not my children. Rabbi Meir says, no, you are. Brings four sukkim in descending order of how bad a person the depths a person could reach, but Hashem will still call you his child. And the fourth pasuk is, so Rashi says on the fourth pasuk, which says that you're not even low life children, but you're up there, Rashi says, al yidei teshuva. Wait a second. Wait, al yidei teshuva. What does that mean? You did teshuva? Surely Rabbi Yehud is not going to argue that if you did teshuva, you have a right to be called Bonim. But we're in Rav Meir now, who argues, right, and says, but Rashi, at that last lowest Madrega, Rashi says, the Hodra Mikri B'nei Kel Chai Al Yudei Teshuva. Oh, what, what, what is that supposed to mean? What does Rashi mean? Now, the Rashba, the Tshuva says, the Rashba, the Tshuva, so Rashba says that even though normally we pass them like Rav Yehuda, when there's a Machlok of Rav Yehuda and Rav Meir, this is not Gaila Halacha, this is the story of a Meshumid, and they wanted a. What's a Meshumid? A Meshumid, someone that uh, left the fold. But you can't, right? So the Raja was asked if you could lend him, if you're allowed to take rebus from him, if you're allowed to take interest from him. And the, that's what the Raja was asked, and the Raja answered, we passed him like Rameyer. You're always a Jew, you always have a connection, you'll always be Bonim, you're always called Bonim, of course. According to Rabbi Yehuda, maybe according to Rabbi Yehuda, you, you become a second class citizen. But according to Rabbi Meir, you're always bonim. We passed him like Rabbi Meir, says the Rashba, even though normally we passed him like Rabbi Yehuda. But 
Rav Meir has all these flying psukim. The psukim kodaiki to Rav Meir. The psukim imply that Rav Meir's sheet is correct, and therefore we're going to go with Rav Meir, and I'm going to pass it like Rav Meir. That's the rational. And therefore you're not allowed to take that. And therefore you cannot take rebus from him, and now, okay, what are the ramifications of being children, no matter what? There's a medrash in Parshas Leishchana. A tsar when things are not going so pleasant, as a, 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 a very um, Very special rabbi said this past Tuesday night when Hashem throws you a curveball. So the Pasuk says, Batsar Lacha Umatsaucha, you'll have troubles. Bishabdo al Hashem alokecha. You'll do chuma. This will spur you to do chuma. Omi Rev Omar of Shmuel Pargarita Bishem Rev Mayor. Mayor. What is this like? Lamed Melech, the son of the king, Shayatul Tarvus Ra. The Melech would send Shaluchim, a teacher, maybe a pedagogue, sounds like the word comes from there, and says, Come back, my child, come back. The son sends back a message, the other of the inflection mind. In Yiddish, you say, What's my problem at this hub? I should come back now. I'm the Luchlach, I'm dirty with hate. I'm embarrassed. I mean, this bias with I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to come back. How can I show my face in the palace after what I've done, after how I'm acting? The father sends back a message. Never heard of such a thing. A son should be embarrassed to go back to his father? No matter what the son has done, no embarrassment to let Chasmashon enter the picture. You're my bed, says the message. And Rabbe is one that says this. You're my bed. Come back. You'll be welcome. There's nothing to be ashamed. Well, you're not the hoser. You're not coming back to the police station. You're not coming back to a government bureaucratic office. It's a the hoser. You're coming back home. You're coming back to your father. Kacha Kodesh Barhu, and he goes through the Psukim in your Biyahu. The easy the Israel of Habay Yakali Ephraim. So in Elo we take Khizak, we prepare and we yearn, we want to do chuba, and we're bonimatim lashem location. Listen to this matter, your mayor. Rash Papasko is like your mayor. You're my chubash. No matter what you've done, says the Medrash. The father sends to the son. I'm embarrassed. No need to be embarrassed. No need to be embarrassed. You're my son. You're always welcome. You always walk in with your head held high that you're my son. And we'll work on it. You know, we'll get things to fix up, we'll fix up things. I don't believe Rashi in Kiddushin means after he did Shuvah. That's when he's still called Bonnie. But then I can't imagine from Yehuda Barani. Called one of the after you do chuba. Rashi doesn't say after you do chuba. I think Rashi means the possibility of chuba. The fact that you can always do chuba. You're still born in because of your day chuba, because you'll always come back. You'll never be embarrassed to come back. Oh, no. come, come to me. I'm available. I'm reachable. I'm approachable. Melech Basada. I'm a problem. Not the Melech, you know, the, the, the big scary Melech in the palace. Where Cheshverosh, even his wife, was scared to walk in, had to have Rishus to walk in. I'm in the Sode. I'm chilled. You can approach me. Rashi, I believe, means I did a tshuva, that possibility, that we always believe in the possibility of tshuva, and the Melech encourages tshuva, and the Melech says to us, the Melech says to his son, you have nothing to be ashamed of. You, no, not, you have nothing to be ashamed of. You shouldn't be ashamed to come back. You shouldn't be ashamed to come back. So that's one major ramification of Bonim Atem Hashem Alokeichem. We pass him like the mayor. The Rashba says we pass him like the mayor, although usually we pass him like Rabbi Yehuda. 
But the Pesukim are just overwhelmingly imply that Ramein is right. We said Pshat in the last Rashi that it's because of the possibility of Tshuva and we believe in Tshuva and we show that the Medrash that that's what Amela says to his son that has gone off to Derech, Yotzel the Tarbos Ra'a and the Amela says to his son, don't be ashamed to come back. You're always welcome in my house. Don't come back. Come back. There's another ramification. Where's the Rambam? Here's the Rambam. Listen to this Rambam. The Rambam says in Hilchus Matnas Aniyim. Rambam talking about Benoz Machaveru, Kimin Stalka, Kimin Chesed. The Rambam says, it's in Perik Yud, Halacha Beis. that's clear that we're supposed to, the Torah demands that we open our hearts, that we feel sympathy for the body. We don't just write a check and say, here, leave me alone. Don't even bother walking into my door. Just leave me alone. I don't want to look at you. Here, here's a check. Goodbye. That's wrong. You're supposed to open your heart. Right? Well, Tommy says, love. Be sympathetic and have Rahman. It says, the Rambam you want Hashem's Rachmanus, you want Rachmanus on others. Someone who has a cold, stone heart. He starts talking about Bnei Yisrael. Rachmanus. Check up on his pedigree. Don't do a shit with him so fast, says the Rambo. Check on his ancestors if he's a stone-hearted, cold, unfeeling brute. Sheina Azorius Matsuya El Ba'akub. We find that by non-Jews, that they're Azorian. Bechol Yisroel, but Kval Yisroel, Bahanil Ve'alayem, and anyone who becomes a Jew, Achimhe. We're all brothers. Shenemar bonim atem Hashem alokeicha. If every Jew is a son of Hashem, what does that make every Jew with every other Jew? So the Rambam, brothers. If we're all children of Hashem, so we're all brothers. Then lo yirachim ha'och al ha'och says the Rambam. If a brother doesn't have rachmonos on a brother, mi yirachim ha'och. Who? How can you not open your heart, open your pocketbook, open your checkbook, open your wallet to your brother? If, if, you, if a brother can't help a brother, we're finished. And everybody in college is a brother because we're all born in. And if we're all born in to Hashem, so we're all brothers to each other. Who will the Aniyah Yisrael turn to for help? This Rambam was actually based on a Gemara in Baba Basra. I believe. Gemara Baba Basra has a debate between Rabbi Akiva and Turnus Rufus, a Roman emperor. And he taunts him, he taunts Rabbi Akiva, and he says, if Hashem likes Aniyam so much, why doesn't he support them? What does he want from you? So he answered him to give us khar. We get out of Gehenna, we escape Gehenna, we escape punishment by giving stock. It's a tremendous chus. Turnus Rufus answers him. No, 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 he says, you're going to get Gehenna if you give me stock. But, I'll give you a marshal. The Melech boss of the dom, Shekos al Avdo, a Melech, 
became angry at his servant to disobey him. For Chavshul the Beis Asura and put him in jail. But Tzivu all of them said, "Lo la Achila, v'lo la Hashkalso," not to give him food or drink when he suffer. V'ala Chodam Echad and someone went and brought him food and drink. Kishe Shomei Hamelach lo Koei Solov. Melach's not going to be angry at him. I said he should sit in jail. He should rot in jail. He should get hungry and thirsty. What do you? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Amul Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva answers him, I'll give you, it's not a good marshal, I'll give you the marshal. Melech Basu Vadam, Shekas al Bino, got angry at his child, and he put him in jail, and he said, You're not allowed to give him drink, you're not allowed to give him food, I want him to suffer, and someone came, the Hefilo Behishko, says Rabbi Akiva. Shomei HaMelech, he's going to reward the guy. So the Zeruchos gave him much, and he's going to punish the fellow. Because when it's his son in jail, and he put him in jail with me. I put him in jail. And I said he should be suffering. But someone comes along and helps my son out. Lo Doro Meshachar Lo. Doesn't give him a present. He rewards him. But I'm not Korean born him. And we are born him. Rabbi Akiva in Pirkei Avos says, Chavim in Yisrael, Shenik Rubonim Lamako. Rabbi Akiva was a Rebbe of Rabbi Meir. He was a Rebbe of Rabbi Yudu also, but apparently he weighs in like Rabbi Meir, because in Pirkei Avos he doesn't qualify his statement. He says, Chavim in Yisrael, Shenik Rubonim Lamako. We are bonded, and that's why we give staka. So look at why we give staka. We should be generous in giving staka. The Gemara says that's our philosophical and theological excuse for giving staka. It's because we're bonded on Mako. Hashem is very, very pleased with us, even though he put the fella in the matzah, so to speak. Well, not so to speak. He did put the fella in the matzah. But he's pleased as punch, as you say. Pleased as punch if we help him out. Same story, but in the first story, it was a person in the jail, and the mellow punishes the guy that sneakily brings him food and drink. And Rabbi Kiva says it's the mellow son that's in jail. Same story, same set of instructions. But he gives him a present for helping out his son. It's a more complicated Gemara than what I'm telling you. There's a Marsha that explains the Gemara, but the bottom line is that this is our where it goes on with other stories, but this is quite the philosophical and theological reason for giving Stockholm. And the Rambam says it slightly differently, takes the same Bonamak and Hashem location, and says, so the sons, your brothers. So the Gemara and the Rambam in different ways, and part of Elul is Ish Lureyehu Matonos Yonim. that's one of the Sukim that the Russian tables of different words spell out the word Elul Ish Lurieyu Matonos Yomim to really get close to Hashem in Elul yearning, groping, searching requires us to be close and to reestablish our feelings of Ahava to every fellow Jew. Because the Raman says, no matter what, we pass on like Rabbi. So if we're all bonnet, then we're all achim. And therefore, how could a brother not help out a brother who's in need? So that's part of El as well. So are you implying also that that this idea of, let's say, having sinna for a Russia would be a contradiction to the Rambam's Pesach? I, I don't know if that's what you're implying. That's what I'm asking. That sinna towards a Russia and sinner towards his evil deeds. That's a sugi in itself. That's a philosophical sugi. How, how do we relate? The very complicated sugi. How do we relate to a Russia? It might be a Russia lahachis, a Russia. But but if we pass the like Rav Meir, so as long as there's a pesach to tshuva, we have to have a sinner in the sense of rejecting his ways, making sure our children don't learn from him making sure that we don't accept 
accept ACCEPT. That we don't accept what he's doing. We don't get saying why about someone who's a Russia. We don't get saying why. But, but the, the person, the possibility of truth is there. And if it's there, then we say like a mayor. So we want him. Again, you can't take interest from him. So there's some balance that has to be struck. And I think the Rashi that talks about tshuva, according to my interpretation, that it can't be talked about after he did tshuva. But he's talking about the potential for tshuva. Is a, how you live like that is very, very difficult. And I, you know, that needs a couple of sociological and psychological sessions. <laughs> and, you know, and, when you're living in a, amongst from Jews, like I, I grew up, where did I grow up? There's no, whoops, okay. Where did I grow up? No reason. No reason. Oh. So, a lot of them not from people around. A lot of them were Holocaust survivors. Rechmano Litzvan just lost it all. Everything, mentally, emotionally. Their wealth, money, and lost souls. He signed well, he signed full of lost souls. That, that's, I grew up with not true people. I, you know, you learn in my class in RJJ, I went to RJJ, right? Um, I see probably half the people came not from. Well, now, you which point people came? They came from yes, the areas? Yes, yeah, but they. Okay. Yeah, but, um, it was a difficult time. Parents did not control over their kids. They were all Holocaust survivors. It was a very dull generation gap, which never wider. But my kids don't know how to relate to another people problem. It's a, it's, it is a problem, and you want to protect your children. It's a sugi bishnei asmo, how to relate to a Russia. But it's true. I mean, you have the Rambam, you have the mayor, and yeah, what you have to achieve is to hate his deeds, to not be sanguine and to accept it. Okay, that's his lifestyle, and I'm my lifestyle. We should never think like that. But we have to leave open the Pesach to Chukum. This is not a Madrego lower than an Ovid of Odesara, right? The Gemara says there's four descending steps. You're still born, you're still born, you're still born. Number three was an Ovid of Odesara. The fourth was, I don't know what next, they have to open a little desire. Like, what, 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 what would be the lower one? And still, born. so that's a major rabbi. question. What? A reformed rabbi. You're, you, you know, I'm happy you're asking me the tough questions. It means you understand everything I'm saying. And you have, like, the one case in a million where there might be an exception because you're called the Yumachti, and that, uh, that's a story from that. But if there's a possibility of tshuva for him, I go up a vote. But it's not the Zionists. We will. <laughs> 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 Zionists are good. If we're talking about tshuva, <laughs> <Jewish. laughs> so, that was a very poor joke. <laughs> no, it was a good joke. It was a joke of very poor taste. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, what about Barney? You know, is it a classical case of Torah? We're talking about Joseph and, and the way God has treated Joseph. And we know that that Joseph admitted that that it would all be Shamani, you know, to get them to go to Egypt. But otherwise they wouldn't have gone down to Egypt. And on the other hand, we see that ten the ten bosses that were killed on 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 on, on, on Yom Kippur, they you know, they paid for for what what no, but the the question, the question is the question is like if you're going to say that they were born in Kudako, then why, why is it to be such an animosity? And then today, today, there's an animosity between groups. So, 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 animosity between groups should not exist. Yeah. As you said, the Rambam says we're brothers. If we're all bottom, they were all brothers. Yeah, so, right. The idea of being punished for a bad deed, it's a good father that will punish his son. And a bad father that will let his son do whatever he wants. Isn't it funny the sparks as they say to each other, hey brother, we should have no uh, that's because you have to read the book, the real show. <laughs> <book. No, laughs> and everybody was a holy brother. So you buy the book, the real shlomo, and you'll understand already 
where Rosh was coming from. <laughs> my father, by the way, was in Lake with Shlomo Kalba, one of his friends with Shlomo, and he sometimes visited my father in his office. In the early, early years, I'm not talking about after he became out of this. He used to, I used to, my father, I have a great picture of my father's wedding where Shlomo Kalba was one of the people holding up the oh, uh, oh, for the chuppah. They lived together by the barn. Yeah. And the stories you hear, as Omakalov was a genius in learning, happened to be true. Not, that? not a myth, not a legend. Yeah. He was legendary in Lakewood. And as my father used to tell me, his mother did not like what he did. And she, uh, to quote my father, she always blamed Lubavitch. Hey. <laughs> she said it was Lubavitch that got into All the Lubavitch. You know what he did? And, she, and that's how my father told him. He, she always blamed the Bible. That's why you're a real slow no. You'll see about <laughs> one second. Is, 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 uh, she said something else as well. If you would have stayed in Lake, would you become a Lord of Matera? He was a Lord of Matera. <laughs> that, that, he, he, his, his life took a different track. And as I said, I, like, really, I was young enough, my father, you know, and he said his mother had a lot of Agnes Nefesh, and she blamed the Bible. But we, blame, uh, we blame Bob for everything. We have no idea the discussion that that man has. It's like mind boggling. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's just mind boggling. I don't know what that is. I haven't seen the book The Real Slum, but it doesn't justify. Let's get back. Let's get back to that. It doesn't justify it. It okay. doesn't justify what? Nothing justifies an Aveira. Uh, <laughs> a technical Aveira. If you're technically doing an Aveira, nothing justifies it. If you're doing things that are not usually acceptable, then that's a different question. But if something is usher, then it's, you know. And on that note, I want to just close, because we're reading Kisavo this week, and that has the Tochachon, it has a lot of things that are not so pleasant to hear. And there's a medrash that says as follows. The medrash happens to be in Re'e, not the Kisavo. <coughs> and it says, can you split up the Tochacha into different aliyahs? And we know we don't, right? We read the whole Tochacha quickly, well, and have a real good Balkore, make sure he says every word clearly and that everybody can hear it. But yet he's saying it low and very, very fast. That's the minute. I don't know if the minute about it, but in most of the Bali's always yeah. the minute. So the, the man who says, Aimaf Sikim Baklaus, El Echad Kore is Kula. Why not? Why can't we be Mafsik in the clothes? Why do we not be? Why is this a good thing? Omar Afiyah Barganda, Lafisha Kosu, because of the Prostak in Mishra. Musar Hashem Beni, emphasis mine as they say, Musar Hashem Beni, I'll tip us. Don't reject the Musar. I'll talk to Tochachto. Don't reject his Tochacha. Hashem, when, even when we're receiving the Klolos, I think the operative Pasuk is really a, an explicit Pasuk in Pasuk for Eschana. The Yisurim that an individual undergoes, and the Yisurim that Klal Yisrael undergoes, is sometimes because we are born in. Because we are born in. And the Pesach says, and the Pesach says, how should I look at it when I start throwing me a curveball? I should look at it, Ki ka'asher yaser ish as beno. I'm not going to give a parenting class now. I grew up, my father was a criminal. He hit me. <laughs> <laughs> my father hit me too. <laughs> many, many times. My father, but he couldn't bring himself to me with his hand. I got hit with a belt. <laughs> a folded over belt. And it hurts. And uh, I didn't go off to Derach, and I love my father, Oshola. And uh, that's how you have to look at it. But no, the Pesach is giving us the answer to all these theological questions. Hashem loves us. 
and Hashem is a father, and Hashem is want to send us straight, like a father sends us straight. That's also a function of Bonim Atem. Ki ka'asher yaser ishez beno. Hashem alokecha mi yaserecha. Hashem sends you yisurim. Of course, he's a loving father, sometimes. And we say, Musar Hashem beni altimos, the most horrible, horrible klolos. Listen to what the minister is saying. I don't appreciate what the minister is saying. We are reading the most horrible klolos in Kisobo. And we have one. We have one. And the reason you don't stop in the middle because don't reject the Musar of your father, says the Medrash. But Pazaka Mishlein. So we don't stop. So we have the obligation and the Shefa from Shammai, the emanations emanating from, from heaven in Elul. It's not just boom, on the calendar. The, the, month before Rosh Hashanah. Elul has its own power. The Melech Basada power. That's the point of the Alter so The Melech Basada power, its nearness, its closeness, it's from Moshe Rabbeinu who was searching and yearning and trying to achieve Slicha. We try to do Jew. We work on bettering ourselves. That is a closeness that's in a certain way even closer than once you get there. Because once you get there, you're on the Madrega, you're on. But when you're searching and eager and you're yearning and, and you're groping, you want to get to the Melech and he's available. That's Elul. It's reflected by the Pasuk of Bornim, I believe, because Bornim is the Medrash that says, don't be embarrassed to come back. That's that Medrash I quoted. Don't be ashamed to come back. Melech says to his son who was Yotzu and Tarbus Ro, come back, come back, and nothing left to be ashamed to come back, come back. It also demands of us to increase Abbas Yisrael, to get rid of the rivalry, not, well, not rivalries necessarily, but to get rid of the tension between groups, to give Tzaka, if Gloria Matanas were Yonim, especially towards the Chagim, people have more needs, we have to be sensitive to that. So we give staka, whether it's like the Rambam, because we're brothers, and the Rambam really is expansive to every bit of the Machabeiro. Or the Gemara that discusses the theological propriety of giving staka, because we're in jail, and the king says, don't feed him, don't feed him, I want him to suffer. But if he's the son, the king is very pleased with the guy that sneaks in and feeds him, and he gives him a present. We have sometimes Busur B'nei Hashem Al-Timos Ki Ka'asher Yasser Ishes B'no But we pass him like a mayor and every, you know, we're born him and we, as Rashi says, no matter how low you sing, the possibility the door to Chuv is open, the bell says, don't be embarrassed to come back, I'll always accept you, you're my son, and we should take advantage of Elo, especially as we come up now to Yudches Elo, you take advantage of the teachings that Hashem do, Amatanya, Chasidus in general, but I know it's Chasidus. My friends don't know Chasidus in that way. My father was a straight lips, I should know. I don't know. Oh. Straight. My father was a Kletzka, Yeshiva, Talmud of a Baron Kotla. You don't get more well lips than that. What opened my eyes was a real Khan, ironically. I say ironically because, of course, my Rosh Hashiva forbade us to go to Yael Shira to the night Seder. So he made a special Shia for us. So we had a special relationship with the Yael Shriva. Of course, we were forbidden to go to his normal Shia. <laughs> Hashem always has the last laugh. And uh, every we should go. He said to Tzibu Machsina Tolva. All of Kal Yisrael should be written for Tzibu Machsina Tolva. I thank every dolphin again for this wonderful opportunity. And the Chavak Chizko Yimtzuf. Before you go, first of all, thank you, Rabbi Benoist, for coming. But also, give the Kaila of Rocha. Give the Kaila of Rocha, whatever you think is appropriate. The person like you, it's, it's, it means something. The Kaila should be, well, another aspect of Melech Basodet is that it's a place of growth. Sod is a place of growth. Palace is not necessarily a place of growth. It's <coughs> growth. It should be growth for each individual here, and then the Kaila should grow. And and even more Talmud and Futsu in every which way. 
and it grows to grow. It grows to always grow and to yearn. And no one knows why it's more and more boring. You should the point. My problem is, for what it's worth, is that you should achieve that. Oh, thank you. <laughs>